Are we really up against a general trend in all of North America or even beyond in reducing the commitment to uh, the public good and the expenditure of public dollars? Well, I think, you know, we, we want to always think carefully about how we spend those public dollars and we want to spend them in the most uh, effective way that we can. But there is a, there is a kind of false uh, scarcity there where what we've seen is, for example, in BC, and it's not only here, uh, a shrinking of provincial public spending as a share of our economy in the same way that we've seen education funding uh, shrink as a share of our economy. And that's a good measure of whether uh, we're in a scarcity situation or not. Uh, and in fact, if we, you know, if we maintain our public uh, spending at a level that we saw 15 years ago, we'd have a lot more to work with uh, if we have priorities that we'd like to invest in. And I think we do. I think, you know, uh, certainly in the public discourse, uh, just about everybody recognizes the importance of investing in education, but often we hear that that may not be possible uh, because of uh, the dollars aren't there. But we, we should keep in mind that we've actually shrunk that public sphere. Uh, it's not as big as it was. As a student of history, Jason, do you get a sense that there's a trend here about the public's commitment to taxing itself for the common good? I think Alex has described pretty accurately a, a change in the last maybe decade and a half or maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, there's also though a sense, I, w I would also speak to a sense that public spending has to be effective and there are ways in which BC's education spending is ineffective. We're spending nearly $360 million on private schools that call themselves independent schools. And I would argue that this is not an effective use of public funds. But we're also keeping open schools in districts that have declining enrollment. The VSB, Vancouver School Board's enrollment is down 6,000 students since 2010. And yet the BCTF's uh, website on school closure shows that Vancouver hasn't closed any schools since 2002. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me either to keep classrooms open, which is costly. Um, when we're talking about effective spending. So those are two areas in which I think some improvements need to be made. It's interesting to me because when you sort of, when you broaden the lens a little bit, it's actually quite strange to imagine that the en enrollment has declined the way it has in Vancouver since people are clamoring to live here, the housing price has increased incredibly. You know, if, if we were also addressing social priorities like having affordable housing uh, in the city, we, we, wouldn't have, we wouldn't see this declining enrollment situation. So there's the, these intersections of, of these social problems. And I, you know, I, I wonder, uh, you know, province-wide, we've seen this decline in enrollment, but we're headed back up again, uh, expected to grow by 40,000 uh, by 2024. I wonder what the efficiencies and, and loss of efficiencies are when we end up in this whipsaw where we close schools for, for 10 or 15 years and then open them back up again. What are the effects on, on the local communities that are, are not measured and, and the, the, the more measurable effects of the efficiencies of closing and reopening schools? I don't know the answer to that, but uh, I think it's, it's something to reflect on.